Hi guys, it's Doc Curry, and First Citizen Bank stock soared over 50% today, but I want to clear up some confusion because they did not buy Silicon Valley Bank. I'm going to explain exactly what did happen, so let's get into it. You may have heard some headlines today or seen some news articles or possibly even seen people on YouTube and Twitter talk about how First Citizen Bank bought Silicon Valley Bank. But that's not actually true. In fact, they didn't buy them at all. Let me explain what is going on here. Late Sunday night, the FDIC announced that First Citizens Bank had assumed all of the deposits and loans from Silicon Valley Bank, or SVB. Now, I want to be clear about what First Citizens Bank did and did not buy. Silicon Valley Bank had about $167 billion in assets and about $119 billion in deposits. First Citizen Bank bought about $72 billion worth of SVB's assets at an extremely discounted price of $16.5 billion. But $90 billion worth of securities and assets will remain at the FDIC. So First Citizens Bank only bought about $72 billion worth of Silicon Valley's assets, and they're leaving about $90 billion with the FDIC. That means that of all of Silicon Valley Bank's assets, First Citizens Bank bought less than half of SVB's assets. So in no way did they buy the bank. They only bought a portion of the assets, and even that was less than half of all of the assets. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, what about SVB's commercial loans? I mean, couldn't that hurt First Citizens Bank if those commercial loans were to default? Well, part of the agreement includes the fact that the FDIC agreed to share all of First Citizens' losses or even potential gains on SVB's commercial loans. So that provides a huge safety net for First Citizens Bank. And on top of the loss sharing agreement, the FDIC will also help finance a deal with a five-year $35 billion loan. And the agency is also providing a $70 billion line of credit to help cover a potential deposit flight. Now that is a really sweet deal for First Citizens Bank. So why did the U.S. have to sweeten the terms of the deal so much in order to get the SVB sale done? Why was First Citizens Bank able to buy SVB's assets for only 23% of the actual value? Well, it came down to one very simple reason. Nobody else wanted to buy the assets. The deal terms may be explained simply by tepid interest in SVB's assets. Bidding had come down to only two banks, First Citizens and Valley National Bank Corp. The deal was getting stale, and the FDIC realized that the longer this took, the more they would have to discount it in order to entice someone. So why did nobody want to buy SVB's assets? Well, potential acquirers held off on the SVB auction because they had hoped to make a bid on First Republic Bank, which they coveted more. What potential buyers of SVB didn't realize is that a bunch of other banks were going to come in and save First Republic Bank. So in the end, a lot of people missed out on a really great deal because they got greedy and were waiting for First Republic to fail. And as a result, First Citizens Bank ends up with this amazing deal on SVB's assets. As a result of the incredible deal they got, First Citizens shares soared over 50% on Monday. And we're talking about a $685 stock that is now worth almost $900. That's a $300 gain in a single day. Some of those options on First Citizens Bank were up over 11,000% on Monday. 
unbelievable rise in the value of First Citizens Bank. But it kind of makes sense because they did get an unbelievable deal on SVB's assets. And news of the sale of SVB's assets actually brought up all bank stocks on Monday, with First Republic leading the way with it up more than 10%. The Monday moves follow several signs that the crisis for regional banks could be easing in the United States. For one, Bloomberg News reported on Saturday that U.S. officials were considering expanding the federal programs that provide liquidity to banks, in part to help First Republic while it searches for a buyer. And second, CNBC reported on Saturday that the deposit inflows into large banks from the smaller regional banks had slowed substantially. So it was all great news for bank stocks today. And over the past two weeks, we saw a major outflow of money from bank stocks and into other assets like mega cap tech stocks, Bitcoin and bonds. And now that we've had two weeks in a row without any major bank collapses or really any bank collapses at all, what we are starting to see is a reversal of that money, where money is flowing out of Bitcoin, out of mega cap tech stocks, and it's flowing back into the banking sector. And this is why we're seeing bank shares rise and we're seeing the mega cap tech stocks go down. We're seeing Bitcoin go down because all that money that flowed in there over the past two weeks is now coming back out and going back into banks. The stock market is starting to get back into balance after the extreme rebalancing or disbalancing that we got over the past two weeks, we're finally starting to get back to normal here. Now, even though the banks are starting to do well and a lot of the fear is starting to go away, the problems with the economy still remain. And while the banks might be doing okay, other companies are really struggling. Disney is starting layoffs this week. This will be the first of three rounds of cuts that will amount to 7,000 job losses for Disney. And as the economy tightens and financial conditions tighten up, we can expect more and more layoffs, which will eventually lead to a recession. We're not entirely sure when that recession will start, but we're pretty sure we are going to get one. Now, over the past two weeks, we saw Bitcoin sort of become a safe haven for assets. But today, a lot of that money flowed out of Bitcoin and Coinbase took a major hit. But it wasn't just because money was coming out of Bitcoin. There was another reason for it. Finance was sued by the CFTC over evading U.S. rules on securities trading. The Commodity Futures Trading Commission alleges that Binance offered unregistered futures and options contracts to U.S. traders. Now, the reality is Binance never officially offered these to U.S. traders, but a lot of U.S. traders would use a VPN to connect to Binance. And once they were connected to Binance through a VPN in another country, they then had access to all of these futures and options. So that is essentially the heart of the lawsuit here. Binance is saying, wait a second, we shut everything off to U.S. residents. And the commission is saying, yeah, but you still allowed it so long as somebody connected via VPN. So it looks like a lot of the U.S. institutions are really cracking down on these crypto firms. And that's the real reason why we saw Coinbase drop over 8% on Monday is fears over more crackdowns on cryptocurrency. So that's what's going on in the markets today. We can expect the money flows to reverse what they did over the past two weeks. We can expect mega cap tech stocks to go down. We can expect Bitcoin to go down. And we can expect that money to start flowing back into the banking sector. Now, all of that said, the overall stock market, I do expect to continue to trade fairly flat this week up until Friday. Then come Friday, we get the PCE numbers and those are pretty much gonna set the direction whether the market goes up or down. I have no clue what's gonna happen. 
but it's looking like we'll probably trade fairly flat up until Friday. Now, if you got a lot out of this video, be a good friend, share this video on your social media pages and with your friends and family so that they will know what's going on in the market as well. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And if you missed yesterday's video where I gave a full update on everything that you need to know for this week in the stock market, make sure you watch the last video that I uploaded here.